Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about post-race recovery. I'm gonna be talking about why it's important and I'm gonna give you guys some movements and workouts that are gonna help your recovery and get you back to training. All right, so the post-race recovery. Uh, a lot of us are gonna be doing races this year and this video is about a really good routine to help you A, get back to training if you've got some more races coming up and B, make sure you don't leave your body in total shambles after a really hard effort. Uh, so I've got my friend Ryan Petrie here. He's here to help me out in the video. Um, so Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Ryan. Uh, I race mountain bikes. Actually, today was great timing to help out my buddy here uh, because I did a 100 kilometer race just yesterday and woke up feeling a little tired. So the opportunity to get outside, you know, help Kirk out and do something with my day that doesn't involve a hard workout um, really sounded like the perfect thing to do. Yep. So in this video, uh, Ryan and I are going to take you through a couple movements that I find very important in terms of restoring some good motion to your joints and muscles. Um, I'll give you a good workout to do with all those movements as well. So let's dig into it. All right, so the first step is very easy, but it's a very necessary buy-in here. It's just going to be a 20 to 30 minute walk, it's just a way to start to get the blood flowing, introduce a little bit of impact into your joints. Um, it'll start to just really get things, you know, move in before we start doing a little more complex movements. All right, so for the, um, the movements that we're going to go over, we're going to go over four different movements. And the way the workout is going to work is that we're going to just spend 15 minutes working through these four movements just kind of in a circular motion. So I would do movement one, two, three, four, and then back up to one, two, three. Absolutely no intensity demand with these. It's really just about starting to, you know, reintroduce big kind of ranges of motions to your joints. Um, so our first movement is going to be this mountain climber um, style movement. So what Ryan's going to do here is he's going to basically get in like what looks like a plank position. And the first thing he's going to do is bring one of his feet up by his hand. Okay, so this is kind of a deep lunge shape. So we're already starting to get a ton of flexion in this hip here and a lot of extension demand in the trailing leg. And so what, what Ryan's going to try and do here is just kind of circle around in his hips. So just kind of move this front knee around in little circles to just start to move that joint. And he'll, <laughs> he'll already start to feel a little bit more kind of range of motion being expressed and really start to, you know, warm things up. So that would be one. He's then going to walk that foot back and bring the other one up and do the same thing. So he's just going to start exploring that hip and moving around, kind of circling. And then he would switch again. Every time you switch, that's a rep, and you're going to spend um, your time exploring that hip and switching back and forth for 10 total reps, which is going to be five on each side. The <laughs> next movement that we're going to look at is the push-up. Um, so the push-up obviously is something that we all oftentimes see in an actual workout format. I love it because it restores a ton of range of motion in the shoulder and your thoracic spine. And whether you know it or not in running or cycling and obviously stuff like swimming, you use your upper body and your, t and your shoulders a ton. And this is a way to just kind of loosen things back up. So Ryan, like in the mountain climber, is going to start in a plank position. And what we always think about in a plank is that I want to be in a really good shape. So I've got my chest pushed away from the ground. So Ryan would basically be pushing up into my hand here, okay, instead of sunk down. Yeah, so the shoulder blades come together. So you're thinking about pushing up into the hand. Yep. And you're avoiding this kind of arched low back position as well. So a ton of loading there is not what we want either. So you're trying to flatten out as much as you can. So now what Ryan's going to do out of this shape, so he's going to try and maintain these two things, is pull his chest and hips down towards the ground together. Okay. After they both meet the ground, he's going to push back up to that starting position. And that was a push-up. Okay, so Ryan can rest for a sec. <laughs> So you don't need to go as slowly as Ryan just did right there, but what you need to focus on is trying to maintain those two things that we talked about in the plank. One being that really good kind of upper back position and the low back position. Um, versus if Ryan kind of started in a good position, so let's start where we were. He's going to go all the way down to the ground like he just did in a good position, and then maybe he arches his back to come up 
Yeah, so it's a loss of position there. So try to maintain that the best you can. And if you can't hold that, one of the scaling options that we talk about is dropping to the knees. So when we drop to the knees, we try to keep those two same things in mind. So he's still gonna try and keep a neutral low back, his chest is pulled away from the floor, and he does the same motion where he's gonna pull his chest and hips to the floor and then push back up. And that's your push up. You're gonna do 10 reps total. If you need to break them up, please feel free. Next movement, and my absolute favorite, is the air squat. Uh, this is obviously a movement that we see a ton of range of motion happening in the hips, but you also get a ton of range of motion in the knees and ankles, and if you have a stiff low back as well, this is a great thing to start to introduce as well. Um, so let's talk about setup position for the air squat. Ryan, if he's facing the camera here, you'll see that his feet are going to go right outside of his hips. So not right underneath them, kind of in what would be a jumping stance. He wants to be a little wider from that. If Ryan turns towards me here, the way we're always going to start a squat is that I'm going to begin by reaching my hips back. Okay, so as Ryan starts to reach his hips back, he's now initiated the squat. From there, he's going to start to just think about pulling his hips in between his heels to come as deep as he's comfortable. As he's going through this, he's pushing his knees out and lifting his chest and then coming back up tall. Okay, so again, Ryan's going to push his hips back. As he's sinking, he's pushing his knees out and lifting his chest. Good. And stand. So a couple things that you want to avoid there. If Ryan started his squat, okay, and then added no attention to his upper back, it would look something like this. So he's going to squat and round out and basically have this really lazy looking squat. Yes, there's range of motion there, but you also want to try to think about muscle activity here as well. So make sure you're thinking about lifting your chest as you pull down in the bottom position. Another thing you want to avoid, which I can show here, is avoiding your knees coming in between your feet. So as I come into a squat, I want to at least keep my, my knees right on top of my feet versus this kind of drop in style movement. You want to avoid that at all costs. So if you need to, you can opt, um, opt to squat down onto a sitting target. So this could be a box, a bench, especially if your legs are really wrecked. Um, or you could hold on to a pole to kind of assist you getting through the range of motion as well. So same with the other movements. You're going to take yourself through 10 of those. Uh, and our, fi our final movement is this uh, kind of two-part movement, which is going to be a cobra position where we're going to really kind of open up the low back and work on a ton of spinal extension and then we'll go back into what's called the downward dog. I'm sure we've all heard of that one but it's this back and forth kind of cyclic motion. So what we're going to start with is uh, Ryan's just going to lay down on his belly and basically what looks like the bottom shape of a push-up. So <clears throat> the the kind of start position here is not only just laying down but also squeezing the butt. So as Ryan squeezes his butt, he's going to push his hands into the ground, but keep his pelvis on the ground to start to arch the back. Now Ryan's continuing to squeeze his butt as he does this. If he loses his butt squeeze, he kind of leaves himself a lot of uh, vulnerability for kind of low back sketchiness. So be sure to keep the butt squeezed. After that, he's going to raise his hips to the ceiling and he's going to push back into this kind of downward dog shape. Now there's two kind of emphases here. There's the one that we're all very uh, used to where we're thinking about keeping the heels down on the ground and really stretching the hamstrings and the calves. But there's also this knee bend form where we can bend our knees and really start to work on this thoracic extension as well. So trying to push the chest down towards the mat or the floor. And that would have been one rep. So then Ryan would then bring his hips back towards the floor squeeze his butt and then lift his chest to start his next rep and again since this workout is not for intensity or anything just take your time in each position and make sure you make it worth it and not trying to rush it and kind of fly through every position so again 10 reps of that as well so again guys what we're going to be doing in this workout is we're going to work through those four movements one being the mountain climber two being that push-up, three being the air squat, and four being that cobra to downward dog movement. 
uh, 10 reps of each of them for 15 minutes, just kind of working yourself through that as many times as you want. Again, it's not about intensity, it's about kind of really focusing on your movement and just trying to express as much range of motion as you can in your joints. So uh, yeah, that's the end of this video, but if you thought that it was interesting and you learned something, be sure to give us a like. <laughs> Click the like button below. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you have any comments or questions about this video as well, um, we're very responsive in our comments. Um, so be sure to hit us up in the comment section as well. And also, there are a ton of videos, lots of good stuff for runners and any athlete. Um, so be sure to subscribe. I'm not sure where that box is, but uh, down there. You can find it, the <laughs> subscription button. Uh, subscribe to our channel, guys. We have a ton of stuff on there. If you got questions about 5K training or strength training or injuries or whatever, I'm sure you could find something that's useful for you. Um, and also, we uh, really appreciate you guys watching this video. So we'd love to give you guys a free gift on kind of this strength training stuff that we do so much of. So we're going to give you guys a free guide to strength training. If you click, let's see this box right here will take you to a place for you to drop your email and we'll send you that free gift and if you happen to be on a mobile device and can't click it you can find the same link down in the description for you to drop your email and we'll shoot that thing out to you as soon as we can thanks again for watching this video and we will see you in the next one